It is good for us to gather in, on such a, an occasion as this. And it is good for me to be here to share with you what the Lord has to say. I want to, first of all, bring greetings. In the name of Jesus, our chief elder, and our soon coming king. Let me also bring greetings on behalf of my family. And at this point, I just want to invite Shanika and Zara to stand. Let me also say thanks for the Men's Association for keeping the invitation for a year. I was hoping that they would keep that invitation open and they did. And so let me say thanks for the opportunity of sharing today. Another preacher who have a long introduction. And so we're going right into the world. And for those with your Bibles, I invite you to turn to Judges chapter 2. And as you reflect on the, the theme of Moravian men living as God's people in a digital world, I want to reflect on the sub theme Moravian men lead from the front. Moravian men lead from the front. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, we come to you for a word. A word that will inspire. A word that will challenge. A word, O oh God, that will cause us to understand what you require and demand of us, Lord. On this occasion, O oh God, I pray that you will use even me, O oh God, to declare your word to your people, Lord. I pray, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, that your word will proceed from my mouth, O oh God, and that you will hide me behind the veil, Lord, so that you will be seen. So even now, Holy Spirit, take complete control. We turn everything over to you, Holy Spirit. And as you dictate, as you lead, we will follow. So have your way even now, mighty God, and be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want you to turn to a man and touch them as a lead from the front. And if you are feeling and sitting beside a man, just touch him as a leaf on the front. A church service such as this one is streamed live for those in different parts of Jamaica and the world to see. It is broadcasted so that those in America, Canada, even Africa, can participate in worship. Fight breaks out among students on the streets. All the students cheer on, fight, fight, fight. And phones are brandished to capture the fight. It is then blasted all over social media for everyone to see. Tide 
into a search engine such as Google, Bing, Yahoo. What does this mean or what does that mean or where can I find the nearest, etc. And within seconds you are presented with millions of responses. Information is readily available. You receive a link from a bank or so-called bank requesting that you click the link and before you know it all the money in your account is gone TikTok, Instagram, Facebook or should I say Meta, Twitter, WhatsApp and other social media platforms provide an opportunity for people to connect but also an opportunity for abuse, bullying and for people to broadcast their business. The digital world, today we have smartphones, smart TV, state-of-the-art vehicles, the latest technology and innovation. No doubt, brothers and sisters, we are living in the digital world. The digital world can be described as the online world where people communicate, create and share information and content through digital channels and services. This includes the internet, social media, mobile apps and other online device platforms and technologies. Definitely friends, there are pros and cons to this digital world. People are able to easily access information and connect with each other anywhere and at any time. There is no greater expression of self and thoughts, etc. There is greater access to information. But as we share some of these benefits, we also share some of the disadvantages. Security and privacy are now at risk. There is the possibility of addiction and abuse and overuse. And there is also the spread of misinformation. As I reflect on the theme, Moravian men living as God's people in a digital world, I realize what is required to live as God's people today is not different from what was required of the Israelites as they occupied the promised land and as they were called to live as God's people. I realize today, brothers and sisters, that what is required to live as God's people is obedience to the voice of God. What is required to live in this digital world as a, a people of God is obedience to God's voice. The real issue or threat to us today is not the pros and cons that exist as it relates to technology or the digital world we live in. Our greatest threat to our is our spiritual attitude towards God. And this determines whether the pros or cons of technology becomes beneficial or harmful. The latest advancement in technology, the different social platforms that exist, the easy access to readily available information can benefit the church only if we are where we are supposed to be spiritually. Our streaming of service, our digital morning devotion, our sharing of text on social media platform, our broadcasting of service is of no value if we're not living a life that is pleasing to God. Hallelujah. Compromise to God's voice and God's word is a dangerous thing. Let me say it again. Compromise to God's voice and God's word is a dangerous thing for a Christian. We are called, brothers and sisters, to remember who God is and what he expects of 
us. And this is a message delivered to the children of Israel after conquering most of the promised land. Judges chapter 2 is an extension of chapter 1. Israel failed tribe by tribe to drive the Canaanites from the land as God had commanded them. For whatever reason it was, in response to their failure to do what God had commanded, God appears to them in the form of an angel and he says, the text tells us that the angel of the Lord appeared to them. This angel speaks to the people as the Lord using the first person terminology. He reminds them that he brought them out of Egypt. He reminds them that he gave them the promised land and he reminds them that they are supposed to keep the covenant they made with him. Friends, the people in Joshua 24, 23 to 24, when Joshua spoke to them about the importance of listening to God, responded by saying, we will hear the voice of God. But the Israelites broke the covenant they made with the Lord. They imitated and accepted the depraved people of Canaan. They left pagan altars intact. They did not obey the voice of their God. I say it again. Compromise to the voice of God is a dangerous thing. For here it is that the people were supposed to drive out the Canaanites. Here it is that the people were supposed to get rid of them. But instead of getting rid of them, they allowed them to stay. And when they allowed them to stay, they began to slowly begin to teach them their own customs. They began to slowly worship the idols that were in the land. If the Lord tells you to drive them out, you are called to drive them out. There is no compromise to the word of God, to the voice of God, and what God requires. We're in a society where I try to please everybody. And you must know you can't please everybody. We're in a society where we're more concerned about the voice of others than the voice of God. We're in a society where we're more concerned about all that is happening in the digital world more than what God is saying to us today. As a response to their disobedience, God declared that he will not drive out the Canaanite people. But by the end of the chapter, you will notice that two things happen. The people of God were tempted because of their failure to drive out the Canaanites out of the land. And the people of God began to worship the gods of the Canaanites. The Lord said as punishment, I will no longer drive them out. As punishment, I'll give you what you want. And when they get what they want, it's going to not be pretty because there's going to be punishment for disobedience. Indeed, friends, we are living in a digital world, but what the Lord truly desires is obedience to His voice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Just tell somebody obedience is better. Tell them obedience is better. Just tell someone obedience is better. Oh, hallelujah. Obedience to God is better than sacrifice. Therefore, Moravian men, my brothers, and by extension, my sisters, I want to leave these 
points with us as we seek to lead from the front. Listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of God. Here's what it says in Judges chapter 2 from the King James Version. And he shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. He shall throw down their altars. But he hath not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Why have you done this? The Lord had commanded Moses. This is your far back it go. The Lord had commanded Moses and the Israelites who came out of Egypt to not make any treaty with these people. Hear what the Lord says. And if you're at your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23. And I just want to read with you from verse 27 to 32. This is what the Lord says. I will send my terror ahead of you and create panic. This is now the living translation. Among all the people whose lands you invade, I will make your enemies turn and run. I will send terror ahead of you to drive all the Hittites, Canaanites, and Hittites. But I will not drive them out in a single year because the land will become desolate and the wild animals will multiply and threaten you. Oh, hallelujah. I will drive them out little at a time until your population has increased enough to take possession of the land. And I will fix your boundaries from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and from the Eastern wilderness to the Euphrates. I will hand over the people now living in the land and you will drive them out. They must not live, verse 33, in your land, or they will what? Cause you to sin against me, says the Lord. And if you serve their gods, you'll be caught in the trap of idolatry. From when God, from when God let the children of Israel out of Egypt, he said to Moses, look, I am going before you to prepare the land for you. I will cause them to be afraid of your name. But you must not make any treaty with them. I am giving you a command. And the command that I am giving you is to obey what I say. Friends, today God is still speaking to us. And as he speaks his message, has not changed. He still calls us to obedience. For again I say obedience is better than sacrifice. To live as God's people in this digital world, we are called to listen to the voice of God. What is God saying to us today? Or are we like the children of Israel that listen only for a while and then go back to our sinful state? In this digital world, sin still runs rampant in our society. People are still pleasing themselves instead of God. I call on us Moravian men. I call on us men to lead from the front and be men who listen to the voice of God. We won't know what direction to go or what path to take if God is not directing us. Let's say it again. We will not know what direction to go, which direction to go, or what path to take if God is not directing us. Amen. We won't know what digital devices are beneficial if we're not listening to God. 
God is still speaking. Oh, hallelujah. God is still speaking. Somebody must praise the Lord. God is still speaking. Hallelujah. God is still speaking. Even today, years after they have entered the promised land, God is still a God who speaks. And we are called to listen to his voice. What is God saying to us? As men, I believe God is calling us to uphold a standard of righteousness in this digital world. As men, I believe God is calling us to uphold a standard of righteousness in this digital world. Here God speaking through Paul to Titus in a, a Titus 1, 5 to 9. He says, these are the requirements of elders. And in those days, it's not like no. Amen. Only man alone could have been elder. Amen. Back in those days, not no. Back in those days, only man alone could be elder. Amen. And so as he wrote this, he was speaking directly to the men. In a society where less men are coming to God and it is hard to find man in the church. In a world where we have more women taking over leadership positions because the men in some instances have let us down. In a world where the values of Christianity have been compromised. We are called to be men who live a blameless life. Hallelujah. We are called to be men who live a blameless life. We are called to be men who are faithful to their wife and no other woman. And look, if he's only doing it, I don't clap you, you know. <laughs> Bishop, I'm going to say it again. I'm watching this then. I was watching before. <laughs> we are called to be men who are faithful to their wife and have no other woman. <laughs> mighty God, mighty God. In a society today where the music we listen to uh, tell us that you can be married and have somebody on the side. Uh, uh, mighty God, mighty God, nobody in business for marriage anymore. Uh, uh, it's pure, uh, pure adultery being committed. Uh, but we're called uh, as men uh, who listen to God to be faithful to our wives. Uh, we're called to uh, have one wife. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to disappoint you, but I say go. <laughs> so I probably say I wish it's Africa League. But we are called to be men who are faithful to our wives. We are called to be men who teach our children how to love God. I don't know if I'm too old. Well, growing up as a child, I never have no option. Growing up as a child, I have to go to church. Even when I was a teenager, living under my mother's roof, I had to go to church. And we're called men to be men who teach our children to love God. But watch this, you can't teach your child to love God if you don't love God. We're called to be men who manage the resources of God properly. We are called to be men who are not arrogant or quick-tempered. Ah, oh, jeez, some man, you don't want to say nothing to them, they laugh about it. By the time you say two things to them, they flare up. But we are called to be men who are not arrogant or quick-tempered. 
We are called to be men who love what is good. Hallelujah. You notice so certain terminologies have been reversed. You notice so somebody say, yo, that body, and that no means good. Yo, that wicked is sick. And how that means good. Maybe some of the older men don't understand, but this is a terminology being used by some of our younger men when they talk to each other. Yo, that body, yo, it's sicky. Yo, it mad, and no good. And all of these terms are now reversed to mean something good. But we are called to be men who love what is good. Hallelujah. We are called to be men who live devout and disciplined lives. We are called to be men who have a strong belief in the trustworthy message of God. Oh, hallelujah. And not how we preach, but not believe the word of God. But we are called to be men who, who, who have a strong belief in the trustworthy message of God. We are called to be men who will encourage and teach others. And we are called to be men who oppose wrong. You can't be living for God and sin around rampant in a church and in a city. You can't call to be served God to serve God. And people doing what they're not supposed to be doing. And you say, see people business and be the time. You can't call to be served to serve God. And no, oh God, no, have mercy. And know that those in leadership position not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And you know, you know. We are called to be men who oppose those who are wrong. And we do it in love. Friends, God is still speaking to us. And as we listen to this, then he will direct us how to spiritually use the technology available to us. But not only should we listen to the voice of God, but we must partner with the voice of God. Let's go back to Judges chapter 2, verse 2. I read it again, first from the King James Version and then from the NIV. And he shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. He shall throw down their altars. But he hath not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? The New International Version says, And you shall not make a covenant with the people of this land. But you shall break down their altars. Yet you have disobeyed me. Why have you done this? Even though the Lord spoke to them and went ahead to prepare the way, they, the people of God, the Israelites, were still expected to play a part, and that part was to drive out the people. Let's go back again to verse 2. Here is what it says. You shall not make a covenant with these people. And you shall break down their altars. When the Lord speaks, he expects us to partner with him because there is work for us to do. Bless the Lord. Brothers, sisters, God is looking for partnerships that will work. Amen. And so I go. Amen. 
And that's how enough we marry. We're looking for partnership that will work. Yes, sir? Yes. I present the people there. Yes. For those who are single and looking for marriage, look for somebody that you can partner with. That's the whole purpose of the marriage, to partner with. Yeah? God is looking for partnerships that will work. work. Bless the Lord. <laughs> I guess it's one more thing. I like repetition, you know. That's how I remember things. When I never reach my age, you know, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is looking for partnerships that will work. He is looking for people who will do what He says. Not for people that will do it sometimes or when they feel like. Today, everything seems to be deemed as normal. So many things are being legalized. So many things are being accepted. But God is looking for people that will partner with Him and do exactly what the Lord says. Praise the Lord. But sometimes we allow fear and laziness to get the better of us, which leads to disobedience. We remember when the children of Israel failed to enter the promised land. So even though the Lord had given them the promised land, they sent out some spies and when they came back, Ted said, no, 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 you can't enter the land good enough. Yes. See, they will bring back some fruits to show you the land good. But up here are 45 cities and, and the people are coming like giants. Yes. And two said, no, God said we can't take it, so we can't take it. Yes. But Ted convinced the whole multitude that they can't enter the promised land. And then what happened? They spent 40 years in the wilderness complaining, cursing, quarreling, miserable, and eventually God would take them out and brought up a new set of people. But watch this again. This new set of people started out doing what the Lord required. But after a while, they did what? God is looking for partnerships that will work. He's not looking for partnership that you can do now and about a little later. God is looking for people who will partner him with him to the very end. Why do you think God don't like divorce? Huh? Because he expects us to partner with him to death do us part. Men of God, I call on us to partner with the voice of God. I call on us to do what we're supposed to do as men of God. I call on us to stand up on Christ our solid ground, to not waver to the left or to the right, to not become dismayed, to not become convinced by others who don't have no relationship with the Lord. I call on us, uh, the Moravian man, uh, to lead from the front uh, and to partner with God Almighty to do it uh, until you die. Yeah. To live as God people, we must partner with the Lord. Stand up against the ills of society. Stand up against the misuses of technology. Stand up against the sins within the church. Stand up, oh men of God, and leave from the front. Don't wait until somebody else is doing it to do it. You see, we love crowd. 
But if it's you alone standing up as a man of God, stand. Don't wait for the throne. Oh, Jesus, a bishop, no matter keep going to the church. But don't wait on the minister. If you are called to stand up, I do what God says. Do it. No matter where you tell, where you come, minister. If God has led you, if God has directed you, if God has pushed you to do something, then do it. Too many of us are away from company. The Lord is looking for partnerships that will work. Once God tells you, then do it. Don't wait on somebody else to do it. Because the Lord will find somebody else to do it. Don't think that you're indispensable. Because when the children of Israel failed to enter the promised land, what did it raise up a next generation? So if you don't want to do it as a man of God today, God will find someone else to do it. And if you find someone else to do it, the mother thinks they are safe. Because the Lord punished those who are disobedient. I call on us, Moravian men, men in general, to listen to the voice of God. And I call on us, men, Moravian men, men in general, to partner with the Lord. I call on us to do what God requires of us. I want to raise a point before I leave. So those who follow the Carmel circuit of Moravian Church's online Bible study, we have been reflecting on the parables of Jesus. And as I reflected on the parable of the ten minas, and as I reflected on the parable of the talents, from those parables, from the parable of the ten minas, we know that God called ten servants and gave, them, gave each of them a minus. And then we know from the parables of the talents that he gave one five and another two and another one. And when God returned, we noticed that one man had produced ten more. And another man produced five more. Then there was one who hid what he had. In the talents, one produced a five more, and the next two more, and one hide what was given to him. Each of us have been given something by God. And the expectation of the Lord is for us to multiply what he has given us. But we can only multiply if we listen to God. We can only multiply if we are zealous for the Lord. We can only multiply if we truly love the Lord. Moravian men, men in general, and even women who are here today. Listen to the voice of God and partner with the voice of God. Jesus' name.